Okay, welcome everybody. And uh, uh, this session is going to be quite interesting. Uh, where I'm going to talk about something very important. Uh, then many religion, uh, the ancient uh, philosophy, uh, Eastern religions talk. They talk about, and uh, also I believe uh, Jesus spoke about, and uh, the Bible speaks about, and it's so evident in the scriptures that uh, however I feel that majority of Christians have completely ignored what we're gonna check uh, what we're gonna you know uh, understand today so uh, before we get into it I just want to do a small kind of a uh, workshop okay let me yeah so i want to do a kind of a small uh you know exercise uh let me share the whiteboard okay so uh what are we going to do is let's i'm going to make two categories one is good and the other one is bad or we can also say evil. And uh, I'm gonna draw a line here. So uh, I'm gonna give you some words and you got to put it in the good or bad or evil category. And uh, I just want you to, I know some of you uh, uh, will understand what I'm trying to say. I just want you to put yourself in the shoes of uh, of majority of uh, people on earth. And just uh, e even if you are very wise, just pretend that you're, you're, you know, not that wise. So let's begin. I want to let me check uh, the chats here. What I want you to do is just let me know in the comment section which category I put this. So when I say anger, where should I put it, good or bad? Can you just quickly type in? Okay, Nasilia says bad, Kate says bad, okay, fine. So I put the anger here in this category. Uh, when I say love, where do I put it? Good category, very good. Uh, when I say, um, Let's say, uh, when I say, uh, um, okay, when I say, let's say alcohol, which category do I put? Bad, right? Okay, there we go. Alcohol goes here. And uh, when I say, uh, juice, where do I put? Good. Okay, that's fine. Now, when I say, let's talk about um, marriage. Marriage. Which category do I put? Okay, good. People are saying good. And uh, when I say uh, divorce, which category do I put? Bad. Uh, so I put, sorry. I should have put marriage here. Okay. Marriage. And I put divorce here. Okay. Uh, what about when I say loyalty? Loyalty. Okay, good. And what about when I say affair? or oh, extramarital affair, bad. Okay. What I, when I say um, uh, having relationship with opposite sex, good, okay. So I just put opposite sex. And what about same sex? 
people are saying bad. Okay, same sex. What about if I say to you, um, polygamy, you know what's polygamy uh, and monogamy. So polygamy is you can get married to, to um, multiple partners and monogamy is you can get married only to one person. Okay, so polygamy is here bad. And we have monogamy. Okay, so that's what we have put on our uh, screen here. And so when we say bad, we also mean that it is sin, right? So here it is. Now, many people look at these things and we categorize it. Uh, even if you didn't know, if you had not known about, uh, I was going to talk about the knowledge of tree, of uh, the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, and what I'm going to speak, you will just do it as it is on the screen. So we have, when I say love, you put it in the good, when I say anger, you put it in the bad. When I say juice, you put it in good. Alcohol was put in bad. Marriage in good. Divorce was in bad. Loyalty, affair, opposite sex, same sex. So quite, uh, quite, uh, you know, a mainstream way of thinking. And this is how people think. And this is how people would put it into a good category and bad category. Now, I'm going to ask you questions. And I want you to now answer me which category you're gonna put anger, love, all these things. Okay, so let's go to anger. I'm gonna give you a situation and you gotta put it into the category, okay? So let's talk about anger. Uh, there's a murderer who comes and who wants to, uh, who comes to kill your uh, very dear, your loved one, would you, and you get angry, and you defend your loved one, is it now in a good category or bad category? Is being angry in a good category or bad category? Very good. So we have an exchange here. Something that you said good, uh, bad is now turning into good okay so uh you talk about love okay so now you are you are having you are you you are loving people you are loving male you are loving females and you love everybody and you want you love them you love everybody so much that you want to get married to males and females and you, you want to have multiple partners now is this love considered good or bad bad so there's an exchange very good so let's look at alcohol most of the uh, in this situation alcohol is used for medicinal purpose should we consider it bad or good People are typing in good. So the same thing that you were considering bad is now becoming good. Juice. You are a diabetic and your doctor has told you that everything that contains fructose and sucrose is not good for you. Is juice good for you or bad for you? Okay. So now it's gone here. Marriage. Okay. Your marriage is uh, on the rocks. Uh, you have been uh, you you have been abused by your partner. You have been beaten up every day. You have been uh, uh, you know your partner drinks a lot and troubles you every day. You are having psychological problems. Now, for you, marriage is good or bad? Very good. Exchange here. 
so same same reason now divorce is good or bad for you okay some people will question this then so we'll come back to that okay i'm putting up situations okay uh let's do it quickly let's go to affair uh loyalty okay we'll go to it later on uh we'll go about uh, uh, opposite sex and same sex all those things later on we're going to discuss and what is the point that i'm making today is you were categorizing when i gave you this words you were categorizing them as good and bad but when we start really uh, looking at things at a broader perspective and a deeper perspective and trying to know everything and then know what it is now we come to a there is a shift there is a shift what was good becomes bad and what was bad is now becoming good do you see that so uh, what do i mean to say okay i mean to say when we talk about sin and many christians talk about sin they look at sin and if you ask them what is sin and what is not sin so christians will always point out to something called as the bible and say in the bible uh anger is sin in the bible uh you know getting married to same sex is sin in the bible uh alcohol drinking alcohol is sin and this is what majority of christians will say this is what the bible says and this is why we should not get angry we should not have marry with same sex we should not have alcohol uh we should not uh have multiple life partners all those things and so we define sin according to what we think that the bible is saying that this is sin in the bible and so we need to follow the bible and because the bible is saying so we need to follow this particular things this do's and this don'ts but uh if you really look at things like i have put up uh the words like anger we see at times the same bible which says do not get angry we see in that same bible ang jesus gets angry and there are many instances where the there is there are people great men and women of god in the bible they get angry and that anger was called as a good anger according to that situation uh we see that the bible talks about alcohol is uh, prohibited but the same bible talks about jesus turning uh water into wine okay and uh, if we talk about uh let's say if we talk about uh uh getting married to only one person the same bible will talk about uh the old testament people getting married to more than one people okay now please don't misunderstand me here i am not trying to uh you know preach or tell that you should be angry you should be uh, drinking alcohol or you should get married to same sex or you should have multiple uh, partners in your life i'm just trying to present to you some kind of view where i'm going to get you to a particular conclusion so if we see this is this is how we look at things and uh, let's talk about something else that i said uh same sex same uh, all these things same bible will try to uh, in the same bible you see people doing it now why i believe 
that when we talk about sin, when we talk about sin, sin is very subjective and it's not objective. Okay. It's not objective. What do I mean by subjective? Subjective means what is sin? What is bad? What is evil? Is you cannot judge good and bad. You cannot judge what is evil just but because uh, the majority is saying that it is evil just because that the Bible is saying in some words that it is evil just because uh, you feel that it is evil or it is bad or it is sin. So how do you know what is bad and what is good? See, something uh, which was considered okay in the Old Testament was considered evil or bad or sin in the New Covenant. For example, in the Old Testament, we know that uh, great man and woman of God, I mean, Solomon had 700 wives. Uh, David had a, a more wife. We have uh, Moses. We have so many uh, great men and women of God. Uh, they had in the Old Testament something called as polygamy. But in the New Testament, things change. And we see uh, people are having only one, uh, getting married to only one person. And uh, Paul writes about it and all that stuff. So we see that things change according to the situation, according to the historical cultural setup, according to um, the people, according to, uh, according to all those things. So, so I, I was giving this example. For example, uh, if you go to one country, uh, the marriage age of a, of, of, of a woman would be uh, 14 years and and in another country it might be 18 years in another country it might be 20 years so if you see uh, if a person gets married a, a people in a country where the age of marriage is let's say 21 uh, if you see they getting married uh, at the age of 14 or 15, you will call it child marriage, or you, you would even label somebody as pedophile. But the same person goes to another country where the legal age of marriage is 14, you won't say anything, right? You say it's, it's okay, it's normal. So when I'm talking about sin, or when I, when, when I talk about sin, and I believe this, and when we talk about bad or evil, it is it is subjective in nature, subjective in a sense, it, it depends upon situation, it depends upon culture, it depends upon uh, uh, many aspects which make that particular thing wrong, evil, bad, or sin. Okay, so for example, if I just say to you, uh, the word abortion, you you will immediately say uh, it is evil, it is sin, it is bad. But if I say to you, the doctors have said if you do not abort the baby, the wife, the 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 woman who is giving birth, her life is at risk. Now you will say, okay, they should abort uh, and save the woman. The same thing which we were calling sin or evil now does not become sin or evil. Do you understand me? So when I'm talking about this, uh, and, and the problem with the world is when we look at things, when we look at situation, when we look at uh, people, we immediately categorize those people into either good or bad. Uh, we categorize them into uh, you know, sin, or uh, we, we say this is good. And that's the main problem that happened in the Garden of Eden. The reason why men fell 
into a lower state of consciousness is because of this thing. We got an I, the lower state of consciousness is about having an I to categorize things into good or bad or right or wrong. And uh, what was happening in the whole story in the in 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 the garden of eden we need to look at it at a very metaphorically uh, what was happening there so we have the serpent there and we have adam and we have eve And uh, what is the serpent actually offering these people was, he was offering them to eat the fruit from the tree of good and evil. That means he was telling them, hey, now you guys, you guys got to start being judgmental about things. I'm going to explain to you what really happens scientifically in all these things. Okay. So the serpent is telling them now you need to start looking at things as right and wrong, good or bad uh, in that manner. And when they, and, and the serpent said, if you do that, you will be like God, but they were already like God. So uh, when they started uh, receiving what the serpent offered, they immediately started seeing things as right and wrong, as good and evil. And that is noticed immediately when they ate the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they are clothing themselves and saying, being naked is evil and, and covering yourself is good. And when God comes and talks to them and they said, I was naked, God said, who told you that, that you were naked? In other words, who told you that being naked was evil, uh, being naked was bad. So it shows a fallen consciousness of men where men started seeing things, judging things as right and wrong, right and wrong, good or bad, sin or not sin. And what was basically happening, the whole fall of men, the whole fall of men is just a result of men being judgmental. It's, it's, not, it's not actually, many people think the fall of men was disobedience. The fall of men is not actually disobedient. The, the fall of men is actually being judgmental, is actually trying to look at things as right or wrong. And because of this judgmental nature, man has been suffering and we've been, we are, we are, uh, you know, we had to bear consequences negative consequences because of this nature that men uh, started dwelling in that is the nature of judgmental being judgment uh, uh, you know being uh, being a judge trying to judge everything and uh, this was the main issue of 
a fallen consciousness now why why i'm talking about all these things uh let me talk about brain waves i i i know i am a little bit jumping from here and there but uh i hope you will surely understand what i'm trying to explain to you today let's talk about brain wave state so we have a uh, brain wave states so we have gamma we have beta we have alpha we have theta and we have the delta brain wave state okay now uh what is brain wave states so brain wave states are uh the electrical signals the waves that are going into our brain so in gamma we have very fast very fast brain wave states like all our neurons are firing very fast so they are very very active uh and okay so it's like very fast waves uh beta is right now as you're listening to me you're very focused you're very uh, narrowed down and very tuned to what i'm talking to you so that's that's beta okay brain wave state alpha is whenever you sit down for prayer for your meditation and um, you know you you kind of relax yourself and you want to get deeper into yourself that's alpha brain wave state theta is when you are going down you know these brain waves are slowing from gamma to beta the brain wave is slowing alpha the brain wave slows down more and theta it slows down more theta is where in uh, you are half awake half sleepy okay this is also called as the trance state where people start seeing visions and get into trance uh, delta is completely when you are asleep and uh, this brain wave state is very important to mankind because it has healing uh, properties so uh, it restores your body it brings healing into you when you are into your brain is at this level in the delta brain uh, wave state so if you notice we have around 1 2 3 4 5 brain wave state but what happens is majority of human beings are mostly in the beta brain wave state we have been locked down mostly locked down into this brain wave state and because we are locked down into beta brain wave state we cannot have the benefits of alpha theta delta and gamma so each brain wave state has some kind of benefits uh in it okay as i said delta has healing benefits it it is completely a restful state uh, uh alpha theta and delta these three brain wave state are very restful states so uh in this brain wave state like in theta you can connect to the divine you can get visions you get uh being unable to see everything in its full form the whole field okay so you are you are completely uh alpha theta delta you are you are getting into meditative state and as you know meditation has so much of benefit so many be benefits theta is uh, being in the trance delta is uh, completely sleep bringing healing so there's so much of good things in this brain wave state also i'm going to explain to you about gamma and how how amazing is gamma brain wave state and what are the benefits that gamma brain wave state has so before i speak that i want to say to you this that we are now mostly locked down into beta you see all the time we are beta we are when we are in beta we are not able to uh go deeper into alpha and we are not able to receive the benefits of alpha we cannot hear the voice of god 
uh, we cannot heal ourselves, we can't go into the delta. So all the time there is stress, the cortisol levels are high, all the time we are locked down in beta. And that exactly what happened in the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, men who was freely able to uh, go from one brainwave state to another brainwave state to another brainwave state, what happened to men was he became mostly locked down into beta brainwave state. So when I'm talking about brainwave state, I'm also talking about realms. I'm also talking about consciousness because each brainwave states are realms. They are consciousness in itself. So when we got into, when, when people when when Adam and Eve fell into sin, uh, and I told you what was the sin, they started uh, judging things as right or wrong. They got locked down. And because they were locked down in that particular state, now what happened was uh, they could not receive the benefits from the other brainwave state, other consciousness, other realities, other realms. And, and that's how the downfall of humanity happened. And now if you see, uh, you know, in any any kind of uh, religion or any kind of uh, uh, tribes, if, if uh, they want to get a solution, you know, the, we call them shamans. Shamans are like priests and they used to be there. Uh, our ancestors had shamans who used to be there in tribes. And shamans uh, were the ones people used to go to. They were like the priest. And so whenever some problem is to occur, they would go to the shamans. And what the shamans would do when they get to know a problem, they would go into these, uh, let me clear this, it's two. These other brainwaves from beta, the shamans would go to either gamma, either alpha, alpha is basically a gateway to go to theta, which is a trans state, or they would go to delta also. And from going into this brainwave states, they would come up with a solution to a problem. Okay. So they would go into this brainwave state, come up with a solution, <clears throat> with a solution. So uh, that's how it happens in every prayer meeting, uh, in any any prophetic meeting. What happens is people get into this brainwave state and they get prophetic words. And through those prophetic words, they get direction into their life. Okay. So how do you listen to the voice of God? Basically, go into brainwave states and you can listen to the voice of God. How do you listen to what God is trying to speak? That's how people do. Like, uh, I remember, I think it was Andaman, Nicoba Island or some island where all the tribes were. And when the tsunami hit, some of the tribes were protected. Okay, they didn't have the modern technology to detect the tsunami, but they knew that the tsunami is coming. And so they shifted themselves to a higher plane and they protected themselves. How did they know that this is going to occur is basically the, there were shamans, I believe, who would who would get into this brainwave state. And when they went into this brainwave state, they would get downloads and understand what is going to happen in the future. So if you ask me, people who, are, who can read horoscope, people who can do tarot reading, people who can do uh, Reiki healing, people who can uh, prophesy, people who get, uh, you know, uh, pray for people and bring healing in whatever religion, whatever culture it is. Everything happens when these people alter their consciousness or they start tapping into these different realms. And when they start tapping into this different realm, that's when uh, solutions come up, problem solving methods come up. This is what happens. But the reason why many of us are not able to uh, get those solutions for any problems of our life is because we are 
locked down into this this state called as beta state okay this state called as beta state now uh, let's talk about let's talk about the gamma brain wave state and what are this what are the uh, benefit of uh, gamma brain wave state okay now this brain wave state is a very very uh with all your neurons are firing they are firing in such a way that your brain is very focused your brain is very alert okay and there is so much is happening into your mind into your brain so what is happening what are the uh, positive points is uh, the scientists the uh, neuroscientists have found out that uh, let me check my notes that when you get into gamma your memory improves when you get into gamma brain wave state your intuition improves when you get into gamma brain waves your uh, your focus improves when you get into gamma brain waves your problem solving improves there are many more benefits that the scientists are still discovering so uh, and yeah when you get into gamma brain waves state uh, information that is given to you you are, you can pick up information you can download pick up information or download information at a at a very high speed what's happening you can you can pick up information and download information at very very high speed so these are the benefits of gamma brain wave state and one important part i want to uh, focus is your intuition your decision making your problem solving uh, you know uh, how do you know what decisions to take tomorrow uh how do you know what to decide whether you should buy this thing or not buy whether you should get married to this person or not get married to this person what is your gut feeling telling you all these good things happen in this gamma brain wave state now how can you <laughs> this is amazing now so you will ask me how can i get into this gamma brain wave state don't think i'm just uh, jumping from here and there from this topic from madam and eve from being judgmental i'm going to coin it all together and then you're going to understand the whole thing so how can you get into gamma brain wave state what are the ways you can get into the gamma brain wave brain wave state simple scientists say that you need to have something called as gratitude if you start uh, being very grateful and grat and start having gratitude and being thankful for everything around you your brain waves your brain starts shifting from one realm the the electricity that is going into your brain the brain wave starts shifting to gamma brain wave state now what did i tell you i'm going to link everything you know spirituality and science is not a separate thing they are both the same thing and i'm going to tell you how uh, the bible says enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart enter his courts with praise so why does it say and why do you see when you're pray, you're thanking and you're praising and you're glorifying god uh, am i just yeah why do you see when you're thanking when you're praising and glorifying god uh you suddenly feel there is a shift and when you suddenly feel there is a shift you're praising and thanking you are in a prayer meeting and you're praising and thanking and glorifying god and there is a shift and suddenly now you feel you are able to hear the voice of god 
Have you have you ever noticed that? Have you ever noticed that? Let me know in the chat. Suddenly you will see I'm I'm now feeling connected to God. I'm feeling connected. I'm feeling I'm trying. I'm I feel that God is speaking to me. God, I can hear the voice of God. What has happened to you? You've been praising with your hands, you're clapping, you're you're singing. I'm being grateful to God and you're saying, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. And suddenly there is a shift that you feel. We call it in charismatic Pentecostal Christian uh, uh, way that we call it, uh, what, do you, what, do you, what is that? We call it the presence of God. The presence of God has come. I'm feeling goosebumps. Uh, the presence of God has come. No, the presence of God has always been inside of you. What is happening is now you are shifting your brainwave state from beta to gamma. And now you're able to become very sensitive to everything around you. That's what gamma does. You are able to sense everything. You're able to know uh, you know, your intuition has improved. Your focus has improved. You can focus on exactly what God is trying to say to you. That is what is actually happening to you when you are uh, giving gratitude, when you're giving praise, when you're giving thanks. Gratitude shifts you into the gamma brainwave state. Another thing I want to say, tell you, and very important thing, is compassion. Compassion shifts you to gamma brainwave state. Now, when I say compassion, uh, don't, don't just think about me. Uh, 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 this word compassion means feeling sorry for somebody. What does compassion actually means? Let's me, let me explain to you. Compassion means here in this case, when I'm talking about compassion, it means being non judgmental. Being non judgmental. And this is what exactly I want to talk to you about. Being non judgmental. What do I mean by being? non judgmental non judgmental means not eating from the tree of good and evil <laughs> Non-judgmental means not eating from the tree of good and evil. That means, do you know what happened in the, in the Garden of Eden? The Garden of Eden, when they ate the tree of good and uh, for the knowledge of good and evil, they fell, you know, God, they, they, they say, God's presence, they felt, you know, I don't believe that God used to come uh, every day at a particular time to visit them. That's not the truth. God is omnipresent and God was always there with them. But Adam and Eve started sensing that God's presence has left them. And because they sense that God's presence has left them, they would feel that God's presence came only at certain point of time to visit them. But the truth was God's presence never left them. And when they felt that God's presence was coming at the cool of the day, that's the time they started hiding themselves from God. What was happening? They were becoming judgmental. And by becoming judgmental, they were kind of uh, fluctuating. 
Let me clear this. By becoming judgmental, they were fluctuating from being into gamma to beta brainwave state. And that's the problem. That fluctuation was happening. They were not able to stay there for too long in the gamma brainwave state, in that realm, in that consciousness. And so they were fluctuating from gamma, they were going to beta, kind of fallen consciousness. And that's where the problem started happening into their life. So what is the, what is the real problem that the whole world is suffering today? Why are we not able to connect to God? Why are we not able to feel the presence of God? Why are we not able to be one with God? When, we, when the truth is we are already one with him, his presence is with us forever. Why are we not able to do so? Is because uh, we are judgment. We are sorry. We are judgmental. Because we eat from the tree of good and evil. We are polarized in our life. Uh, and so that's why I started my session today with that. The day we start uh, coming out of that mindset of not judging, not looking at things as right and wrong, good or evil, that's the time we will start living in that gamma state. And uh, that's why I started my session with it. When I say this word, abortion, what do you say? What do you think? What comes into your mind? Bad, evil. When I say to you drugs, when I say to you weed, when I say to you alcohol, when I say to you uh, uh, extramarital affair, what comes into your mind? It's bad, it's evil, it's sin. And because we keep on judging it, keep on, our, our, our brain is keeping on judging it. You know, we are in that beta state. We are not able to come out of that beta state and push ourselves into the gamma state. And that's the reason why we cannot get the benefits of that consciousness of gamma. And I think, uh, we need to learn now, we need to learn now how we should not be judgmental. The worst thing is we, we take the Bible which God has given to us and we use the same Bible to judge. To judge our neighbors, to judge our friends. But we forget the scriptures where the Bible says, you will be judged as you judge others. Why do you judge others? Bible says don't judge. Because judging is the biggest issue which led to the fall of humanity. So, you know, we just look at the Bible, we read the Bible, and we do not look at the context we do not look at the situation and we define some verses and we take those verses and say, okay, okay, this is sin. And we just tag it and label it as a sin. Is we, you see, the Bible is not a black and white book. It has historical, cultural background. There are things that are not written in the Bible. And if we got to read the Bible by the letter and not by the spirit, we're going to miss what God is going, what God is really saying. You see, uh, recently there was a, there was a person who came, who spoke, who was speaking to me. Uh, one of my friend was sharing with me and saying, you know, this person has a very bad marriage is really suffering in the marriage. 
and uh, like there is no happiness there is no there is no joy in that marriage so the person came and said to me i'm having extra marital affair and i said so what <laughs> i said to that person so what and this person just opened up and said to me you're the first preacher who is i've never seen a person like you who said this to me if i said this to some other preacher that preacher would have said this is wrong the bible says this is bad this is evil this is not good you this is sin you'll go to hell the person said to me i'm having extra marital affair but i'm uh you know everything in my house is well maintained my children are taken care of my husband is taken care of everything is taken care of but i'm having extra marital affair and i'm not allowing that relationship to affect any area of my life any area of my life but i am having that relationship only to escape from the 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 problems that i am having now i i I'm, i'm not i'm not promoting extra marital affair but i can say to that person uh this is bad this is sin but i took a step back and i said what if this person is not having an extra marital affair what if this person gets so frustrated and now fights with the husbands and uh troubles the children and not does not take care of the children wouldn't it be more worse than having an extra marital affair i'm just putting it across to you guys i'm not i'm not promoting nor i am condemning the situation but i'm just watching it and the eastern philosophy the yogic philosophy talks about talks about this beautiful thing called as drishti where you just see things as it is without judging it you see things without judging it this is one situation just came in front of me many people uh, ask me what is your take on homosexuality on same sex marriage and as a christian if i say if as a christian pastor if i say uh, it's okay believe me it's it's like it's going to be turn nightmares to me like people are going to persecute me but imagine and i'm i'm not promoting it nor i'm condemning it i'm just putting it across i'm just saying imagine a person right from childhood have attraction towards a same sex person and no matter what counseling no matter what he has done or she has done it is not getting resolved imagine the suffering the person is going to go throughout his or her life i personally believe what god was condemning in the bible was something that was worse because if you read the homosexuality in the bible is there was men raping men women were killed raped those kind of homosexuality that god was against but i don't know i'm 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 not judging this i'm not saying it is right i'm not saying it is wrong i am saying why don't we just look at it as it is without without uh, saying this is right or wrong why i mean i came across people who who have two wives like i know a preacher who has two wives 
and still preaching the gospel. And like everybody is condemning him. But we never condemned Solomon. We never condemned David. We never condemned maybe Abraham and all those people. And we consider them as saints. And we read their books. And most of the Old Testament were written by these guys. And we call it the word of God. But today, if somebody has that, I'm not promoting it. Guys, please listen to this. Now, it is said, good and evil. That means I you cannot eat from the tree of good and evil. That means I cannot say, hey, whole world, let's become homosexuals. I cannot say, everybody, come on, let's have affairs. Now I'm saying affairs are good. <laughs> and again, I'm trying to eat from the tree of good and evil. I'm saying homosexuality is good. I'm saying uh, alcohol is good. I'm saying everyone should have alcohol because it's good. I'm saying everyone should take weed and take drugs because it's good. Now I'm eating from the tree of good and evil. So I'm taking the side of the good. First I was taking side of bad. Now I'm taking the side of good. So there is this polarization. Either I'm taking the side of good or either I'm taking side of bad. No, no, no. We are not called to take the side of any. Rather, we need to look at it without taking sides. Be non-judgmental. Look at the situation. If you have no clear picture of the whole thing, don't come to a conclusion because we are so quick in coming to conclusions, so quick in judging. And the beauty about Jesus, if you see how Jesus healed, if you read the scripture, it says Jesus was moved with compassion and he healed people. Jesus was moved with compassion and he forgave the woman who was caught in adultery. Jesus was moved in compassion and he went to that woman, uh, the, the, the Samaritan woman. He never judged. He said, hey, no one condemned you. I'm not going to condemn you. No one stoned you. I'm not going to stone you. Jesus was always in the gamma state. He was able to jump into that gamma brainwave state. Why? Because he was not having that spirit of judgment, uh, of judging right and wrong. He was looking at the situation as a whole. And he was not taking, saying, this is right, this is wrong, this is good, this is bad. Like, today, if you just open your newspapers, I want to, let's have an exercise in the coming week, in the days to come. In the next seven days, just open a newspaper, switch on your uh, television, uh, check your Facebook, and whenever you see some news, ask yourself, am I taking sides? Ask yourself, do I think this what has happened is good? This what has happened is bad? Let's ask ourselves, do I judge? And, and we might say, uh, oh, there's a terrorist attack in so-and-so country. All this ter terrorists should be shot dead. What did I do? I judged. But we say it's okay to judge the terrorist. It's okay to judge the terrorist. But it's, you know, the Bible says don't judge your brother, but it's okay to judge the terrorist. No, what is happening is when you're judging, you are shifting your brain. You're not shifting your brainwave state. You're not going into the gamma brainwave state. And that's why the problem happens. Imagine, imagine you were born in some community and right from childhood, you were brainwashed to become a terrorist. <coughs> Sorry. You were brainwashed to become a terrorist. Now for you, to kill people from another religion is good. But for me, it is bad.
So imagine, is it your mistake that you were born <coughs> in particular country, culture, where right from childhood you were taught to kill people of other religion? Is it your mistake? Then why am I judging you? <coughs> when we look at rapes, when we look at, I'm not saying rape, I'm not trying to say rape is right. I'm not saying uh, anything is good or anything is right. I'm just putting things ahead so that we learn to look at things in such a manner that whether I am feeding, whether I'm judging the situation, that's all I'm saying. I'm not promoting any bad things. When you hear about one of your friend, one uh, a, a preacher falling into some kind of sin, what are you doing? Are we judging? Are we looking at it in a different mindset? When we judge, we are not getting into the gamma brainwave state. We are, we are locked down into the beta brainwave state. Yeah, Kate is saying scandalizing. It's not just scandalizing. It's just a mindset. If we just in our mind, just keep judging, I think we, we start getting locked down into beta brainwave state. And so, uh, let me tell you about this. To really access the gamma brainwave state, uh, two important things that one can do is to have a heart of gratitude. And second thing, you and I should not be judgmental. When I say not be judgmental, I'm not just talking about being judgmental about others. But don't be judgmental about your own self. I'll give you an example. You're going for a prayer meeting. You're going for a prayer meeting. You are thankful and praising God, but now you're judging yourself as a sinner. You have sinned or you have done something wrong. You have son done something bad. Now you're condemning your own self. Your guilt, your, you become guilt consciousness. Now you will not be able to experience the presence of God because that judgment is not allowing you to step into gamma brainwave state. Huh. So when you are judging your own self, therefore, if you think God is someone who judges you, you will not access the gamma brainwave state. When you start condemning your own self, when you start being guilty about your wrongdoings all the time, and when you don't know about the grace of God, the goodness of God, and you are not grateful for the grace and goodness of God, how can you step into the gamma brainwave state? It's difficult. It's difficult. And... I mean, we have, we are, we are programmed in such a way. You know, I don't believe that there is something called as original sin in that manner. But if, actually, if you really see the Adam's nature, the Adamic nature is inside of us. We are programmed like Adam in such a way that right from childhood, we are created to judge situations we are created to judge things and because we are in that mind of judging all the time we are not able to live in the gamma brainwave state and because we are not in the gamma brainwave state we are lacking the benefit that this consciousness is waiting to give you and me I mean, we have no problem Solomon having 700 wives. But we have a problem a preacher falling into sin and then publicly acknowledging and asking sorry, but we will still have problem with that person.
that's why when when you know people listen to teachings we keep judging is this teaching right is this teaching wrong uh, how do but bible says so bible says that this bible says that as we keep judging it what is happening you're becoming judgmental and so it is not allowing you to access the gamma brain wave state it's not allowing your spirit your intuition to start operating in your life and so i want to end this up in this manner uh let's take up a challenge for next uh, seven days and let's take up some words that we look let's look at uh, some situation pick up a newspaper pick up a newspaper or listen to the news channel uh and when you read about rapes when you read about murders when you when you listen to stories of people having extra marital affairs divorce uh, situations when you are looking at this kind of thing ask yourself do i judge do i judge this thing maybe the guy has divorced because the marriage is really in a deep problem the person has been abused so badly and for that person divorce is right that's the solution maybe the woman has aborted the baby because the if not the whole situation would have been bad things would have gone many lives would have been saddened maybe that's the thing why am i judging and so let me speak finally this and restate this sin is subjective and you can't figure out whether it is sin just by looking at the bible i want to end this by saying this you can't say this is sin or this is bad just by looking at the bible i think the best way to know whether this is sin or whether this is bad is if you know the entire situation properly and if your conscience is is saying that this is going to really cause hurt and harm for everybody so coming back the person who came to me talking about extra marital affair i said to that person i don't know whether this is right or wrong but one thing i appreciate is that you are matured enough to handle your children and your husband and your extra marital affair i didn't i'm not saying i encourage but i'm saying i just looked at it as it is so uh this is what i have to say uh probably will come up with more uh, videos and share more about the gamma brain wave state thank you so much for joining in bless you love you and see you soon thank you if you have questions you can ask me